It's dirty work, but someone has to do it. In Pakistan's province of Punjab, the menial task of sweeping falls mainly upon the Christian community, according to a report released by the Minority Rights Commission in 2007. Street sweeping has traditionally been the job of Christians in Lahore, who were almost all once Hindu untouchables. Low-caste Hindus converted to Christianity in the late 19th century to escape the caste system. But since the creation of Pakistan in 1947, notions of the uncleanliness of minorities have ensured that sanitary jobs are reserved for non-Muslims. 45-year-old Michael Riaz works on daily wages to earn just 50 pounds a month. He says his people are discriminated against by employers. People look down upon us Christians wherever we go. That's why my children want to leave this country. There's nothing for us here. The only work available to Christians is sweeping, even if they're educated. All we ask for now is for permanent jobs, higher salaries and benefits for our children. Thousands of Christians are work jars or temporary workers. Most of them have been working for over 10 years without any benefits, insurance, pensions and worst of all, no job security. More than 10,000 Christians work for the Lahore Waste Management Company, a recently privatized venture in charge of cleaning Lahore, a city of more than 12 million people, of which 2% are Christians. The Human Rights Commission in Pakistan even goes on to say that this kind of employment discrimination is openly advertised. This discrimination is widespread. Even government advertisements for sanitary jobs specifically address Christian applicants. The Human Liberation Commission provides legal aid to vulnerable Christians such as these who have been thrown out of their village by local landlords. The chairman believes the government has been openly discriminating against its Christian employees for many years now. Christian sweepers are being exploited by the waste management company. The current government in Pakistan is employing the most shameful tactics by hiring the Christian community on daily wages and Muslims on contracts. Uh, contact pay. The Waste Management Company's managing director claims the matter of regularizing sweeper jobs is for the courts and government to decide. Work charge implies is again a pattern adopted by the governments, not by us, by the company. It's a complex issue before lying before the courts. We came, we told the government either you get them regularized or we offer them to come as contractual employees. At least you get, you know, group insurance. At least you get a social security cover. At least you get a EOBI cover. There are no provisions for work charge. Even if they die on the road, they will not get any compensation. But a labor rights lawyer says the courts have already directed the authorities to abolish work charge labor. This is illegal. Work charge is totally illegal. When labor unions take such cases of labor exploitation to court, they do get justice as there is no such provision of daily wages in Pakistani labor laws. Such laws don't exist. With limited resources, providing an education for the sweeper's children takes a back seat. Thus, the vicious circle of poverty is repeated. I spoke to a number of employees of the LWMC about their living conditions, both at home and work. My name is Yunus Masi and I have seven children. I've been sweeping for the company for three years now. I won't lie to you, we haven't sent any of our children to school because we are just too poor.
None of my children can go to school. They all stay at home because we just can't afford to send them all to school. We're literally starving. Would you like to go to school? Christian sweepers also face social discrimination when they are called derogatory terms such as churas, which means low caste. They are treated as untouchables. These people are considered the lowest of all people because their work is deemed unclean. If cleaning your own home and land is considered unclean, then we should all be called churas by that definition. We get extremely angry when someone calls us a chura. A chura is a third class person who is only fit to put his hands in garbage and sewages. The term chura is tied to hundreds of years of caste prejudices rooting from the Hindu caste system. A social researcher explains the roots of religious bigotry towards the community today. Why they were converting to Christianity? It was the colonial time. These were the most depressed people. They were not just untouchable. They were even unseeable. So this community of the sweepers, they converted in large numbers. The untouchable ones were still hated the way or the treated the way they were treated by Hindus. So, so because the Muslims adopted the caste system, they adopted its norms. The disproportionately high number of Christians employed in the sanitary sector raises many questions of racial discrimination. But the director of the Lahore Waste Management Company categorically denies this. The sweepers in Lahore get less than traffic wardens, right? That's unacceptable. The fact that they are also, a majority of them are also Christian, lends itself to the allegation that this is some sort of racism, institutional racism, right? And now I can testify that on a personal level, I don't know that's true, but I don't like being cast under this allegation. The situation is not perfect by a long shot. And it has to do with the government's commitment to change its practices with labor laws as well. And to, to, to say, all right, fine, we're not going to spend so much money on X, Y, Z, and we're going to make sure that the people who work for us get well paid. Uh, that's the commitment that needs to be followed through. Another cause for concern is the increase in religiously motivated violence as seen on this boy. Attacks such as these stem from a flawed blasphemy law that has traumatized the Christian community. The law is misused for personal gains such as land grabbing in the Joseph Colony case. The colony was burned allegedly by a Muslim mob after a drunken row between Christian resident Savan Masi and his Muslim accuser. The family of the accused explains their side of the story. These people at the steel factory wanted our home to expand their businesses, so they made up a false blasphemy charge to burn our home. The colony's younger residents, like this young girl, are doing what they can to help their community recover from its ordeal. I'm in the ninth grade and I teach Sunday school here. I want to be an air stewardess when I grow up. How do you see Christians treated here? Muslims don't think well of us Christians in Pakistan and look at us as a threat. That's why they burnt down our homes. Although the authorities were unable to prevent the attack, the government helped the colony to rebuild its homes. Steel mill warehouses declined to comment on these allegations. Savan Masi is currently on trial for blasphemy.
Pakistan's Minister of Human Rights and Minorities, Kamran Michael, says it was the police's negligence that allowed the attack to take place. We suspended all the police personnel present at the incident, including the district communication officer, for standing by and letting these mobs burn the colony. This was criminal negligence. We didn't know until after the attack had taken place. No intelligence was shared with us. No one, including the media, told us anything was going to happen until after the attack. However, the editor of Pakistan Today, which is the first publication to break the Joseph Colony story, says these statements by the senator are false and an important government official is to blame for the attacks. Even though everyone reported about it, the police did not. In fact, the SHO of the area, the inspector in charge of the area, two days before the incident, uh, he was on, he's on record, he published it. He said that if the government allows me only 10 minutes, I can set these people right. No one listened to him. Then on the day of the attack, he was told not to lift a single baton, not to hit anyone. In fact, he got a head injury. When he directly responsible for or uh, giving him orders? Well, the orders were coming from the chief minister's office. And then he was made the complainant in the case against the people. And the very next day he was removed from that position. He was held responsible for the unrest. A, I am a constitutional law scholar. So I look at the, evolution of the, the discrimination against the Christian minority could be explained by the evolution of the constitution of Pakistan itself, which has become far less protective of its minorities, according to constitutional law professor Osama Siddiq. So one ongoing sort of paradox within the Pakistani constitutional paradigm, of course, is whether Article 2A, which enshrines the objectives resolution and gives a very theocratic feel to the ethos of the Constitution has any continuing role to play in terms of defining rights. I mean, there was a time in the 1980s where we saw a trend where there is all this notion of Islamization of Pakistan. And what came with it was also a lot of ambiguity as to whether the minorities were on the same footing as, let's say, the Muslim majority citizens. Uh, a lot of legislation which took place also had a differential impact on the minorities. You have multiple subsequent things happening like, you know, revealing your uh, religious sort of uh, inclination in your identity card, in your passport. Um, so I think all these things are not just symbolic. They have a real bearing as to how the state visualizes different citizens and to the extent that the state can be perceived to become a more theocratic state and to subscribe uh, to the majority religion. Obviously, that has ramifications in terms of how the minorities visualize themselves. The hardships that Pakistan's Christian community is facing are made worse by the lack of leadership. There is no one to protect their rights. Asher John believes this is caused by the lack of initiative taken by Christian church and political authorities. Christians don't have a political platform where all Christian leadership can come together and form policies. As a community, no one has actually tried to make them understand that there are other things, there are other jobs that they can do. Marginalized from the mainstream job market and still facing racial discrimination, this is a community in peril. The government will need to play a fundamental role in wiping out racial discrimination and provide education to bring this community into the mainstream job market. After all, a community that is responsible for cleaning Pakistan's streets deserves the same respect in return.